All right, so for today's build, we've got some Corvette, Corsair Vengeance LPX, uh, 16 gig of 3600 RAM. We've got our amazing 5700G, and we're going to put this in the computer, stock cooler, because this is just like uh, basically doing QuickBooks. We don't need a graphics card. Um, we do have a Samsung NVMe that I'm putting in here because it was fairly cheap. It was like five bucks more than a uh, uh, crucial. So uh, we'll uh, get this stuff installed and test it out. All right, so the cooler is on. We haven't tightened it down yet. I wanted to showcase. So the little standoffs down here, those are for the bracket. And what happens is sometimes when you're uh, doing this on something else or something that's elevated and there's room below the actual motherboard, uh, there's no space here. It doesn't have enough room to fall out and that bracket can fall out uh, And in which case you'll have to actually hold it from underneath and use two hands to screw in uh, w One of the two sets of corners you pick one and that will let you You know then continue to put the put it back down face uh, face up and then continue screwing in the brackets It'll be enough to hold the screws towards the back so that it'll pull towards the back and won't fall out while you're trying to screw in the cooler. All right, there we go, it's on. And what I like to do is I plug in the CPU pan and then I turn this so that I don't have a bunch of, like no one wants a loop, especially sticking over the RAM. So I kind of turn it and just make sure that the direction where I don't have too much slack so that it's easy to tuck away when I uh, put it in the case. Um, this is gonna be a lot cleaner. You'll see it just kind of goes across the uh, the VRM cooler, which will be fine. And then, uh, yeah, it should be a lot uh, a lot neater when it gets put into the, the case. So let's get the RAM installed. We'll hook it up to a monitor and replug in the power and uh, see if it posts. All right, so while I was doing the power, I decided that uh, I should probably show that there was a comment about someone trying to plug in their uh, GPU power or the 24 pin or something like that. and. They were wondering if it was okay, and I want to show this little lip. So this is the 24 pin, and you'll see it's got this little uh, lip on this little, the additional 4 pin here. And he was doing, if I can do this with one hand. Nope, it's hard to do it wrong. <laughs> Alright, so uh, something like that, right? So that lip... Is on top of the bracket you can't do that because then there's nothing holding this down and any movement of the cable it will just slide up so what you want to do is you want to make sure if I can get this here like that and you'll see the the arrows on this connector actually line up together and when they're not together the that's not installed correctly so just make sure that lip is there the same goes for the uh, additional EPS connectors if your power supply has one that has the same lip on it you gotta make sure that it goes below but the 8 pin uh, standard one this is what you use for the regular power and it has two clips on each one so they actually secure themselves you don't need that lip so you don't have to worry about that so if your motherboard only has an 8 pin like this one only has one 8 pin there would be a, an EPS one over here somewhere um, that's what this other one is for uh, and you can also use a six pin and then there's a six plus two eight pin those are for different boards that have EPS uh, like some of the bigger Intel ones uh, especially ones that allow overclocking uh, and more like thread rippers and stuff like that they require more power so um, yeah just just a, a note and a, a good little thing to know when you're trying to hook up your power so uh, let's go ahead and get this done. All right, so we've got a, uh, a cool little, this is a Dell all-in-one that is broken. No, the drive's gone. Uh, I just use it because it has an HDMI input and it's a, a cool looking display. It's also been dropped. Uh, that was my bad. I was making my arcade cabinet. So we're just gonna make sure that we are on the right input. So that is, okay, that's the internal computer. So this is the display for the HDMI. We've got hooked up and we have a keyboard hooked up. And uh, we will just go through some stuff. So now you'll look at the front panel connector. Uh, it says, if I get some stuff out of the way here, the power is the top two on the right and the switches on the resets on the bottom. 
So on the panel, these two are the reset and these top ones are the power. So what we'll do, so I can do this with one hand. We hold this and we got boot, it's got some spin and we'll see what we got here. Cool. There we go, we got BIOS screen. So we can go through here. You can see we've got RAM speed defaults to 2133. We'll do that later once we get the uh, system all built. And uh, yeah, everything seems to be working. Uh, we have no, no uh, thing in here. We can see our new BIOS version, which is the name prior to us renaming it to msi.rom. So the flash took, we got BIOS at posts, uh, into BIOS at least. So we will put the whole computer together and see uh, if we can, how stable it is and do some tests on it. All right, so here we've got a uh, fractal design. This is a Focus G. And you've got your front panel IO, you've got your uh, USB audio, USB 3. So this one is the USB 2 header. And then you have your front panel IO, which we're going to show you guys how to put that in. Uh, it's got a, a drive cage. Yeah, it's removable. It's got screws on the bottom. You can undo these things and take this out if you need the extra space, uh, especially if you have a board like this one where it has a, a bottom slot. And if you are going to do SLI or you have like a really big PCIe NVMe um, hard drive thing that has like eight or whatever storage things that might get long enough and it might be have a heat sink on it that might interfere with this. Uh, you just have to check when you have the uh, board installed and see if you have to remove this or not. Um, it looks like it's got some pretty good depth. Um, I don't have a spare long graphics card to actually test the size, um, but um, it's got to be fairly big. Um, a radiator though, okay, so it's going to have to be, there's no room on the front to do that. So you would have to have it, the fans, and then the radiator mounted here. So it's going to come out to like somewhere around here. So it might just barely, you might have to remove the drive cage in order to actually have uh, um, room for the radiator for enough airflow. Because this is just, there's, there's like holes in here, but if you ever populate these, it'll just kind of block it. So let's uh, put the heart or the uh, motherboard in and uh, we will connect some of these things like the front panel and the USB uh, and find out where we're going to put all these fans. There's uh, two included fans. There's no rear fan, which is okay. I mean, we'll just have these two as intake, and that should be plenty for the system. It's not going to be, like, overclocked or anything. I might actually undervolt this one just so that it uh, doesn't use a whole bunch of power. But, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get to it. So, inside the little baggie is this little uh, kind of socket thing. It, you use your screwdriver, and uh, it goes over top of the things. And the one that you got to do is this little standoff in the case. This doesn't actually have, let me uh, turn the flash on here and try and get down here. You can see it's got like a nub on it. You cannot leave that installed. So we gotta put this in here and use a screwdriver to undo this because this is actually a motherboard spot and I just lost the socket. But that is needed to be removed, otherwise it's, it sticks up enough that it will uh, touch the underside of the motherboard. Well, that was interesting. That's the first time that that's happened to me in a long time. So we've got the uh, standoff trays installed. we got three here. Uh, and then we have one, two, three. And then I'm missing one. So I had to grab one out of my stock, and it's brass. I don't have any black ones. I looked in the baggie, and I don't see any black standoff screws in here it's just it's all the nub pieces and stuff like that and sockets so i am short a standoff screw but anyways we got that installed all right so before we go and screw this down um so i put the io shield in and i just want to show you guys what you got to look out for so 
this uh the network port there's that little metal flat tab it goes on top of the port um sometimes during shipping and manufacturing they're too straight and when you go put it in it actually bends out and it will cover your port make sure that's there uh and you're gonna watch for any of these other ones like this one here it's got the little cutout for the circle but the the tabs are still kind of like they're not in the way it'll be fine no one uses that anyways in the uh, normal world but uh yeah you're just gonna make sure that all of these ports especially like your usb like you can see this one here i gotta redo this this one here has the tab it did it's bent down so when i put the board in it didn't go on top of the socket so i'll have to take that out and fix it all right so we've got the holes line up pretty much i just gotta kind of push it forward as i screw them in but the uh the ports are lined up i fixed the uh socket you just kind of pull up on the tab and then all of these are clean as well so we should be good to go we will uh secure this in place line it up a little bit better here this is kind of offset a little bit but uh everything else should be good and let's screw the motherboard down all right so as i was putting everything in and wiring up my uh usb and front panel stuff this is the audio thing and i had the power supply installed and then I realized that this little spacer right here is not big enough with the power supply installed for this end connector for the front panel audio to go through. So you have to take the power supply out just to get it through the spacer because the power supply goes right up against it. I hope that it has enough cable clearance there. But anyways, uh, so that's just a note if you're trying to install your motherboard and don't know why in the Focus G case the cable doesn't reach because it it's attached up here when it comes ship and if you go down the way that these come down through the bottom and come up it doesn't reach it doesn't have enough cable and you can't go through here and across it's not long enough so you literally have to go across the back of the case like that so there's, this is the cable that comes from the front and it has to go across the back just to fit. And like, it doesn't have much room at all. Like either they should make this cable longer or, um, yeah, it's just, that's not the greatest. <laughs> First time I built in this case. So the mesh of IC is not like that at all. Okay. So I managed to get the side on. There was not, it's got a bulge on the side. So I was actually able to get. The cable is somewhat there. It's not very nice. This is like tight against it and there is no more room. Like I can't hide this because it stacks on top of the other cables. Uh, and there's not enough room for this to go back, the, the 24 pin. There's just not enough room to, to zip it down. Um, it's, yeah, it's not the greatest for cable management, but you do with what you can. You can kind of tuck some of this stuff away, but... Uh, I had to route the fans um, up the side on the other side. So they go up like this and then they come out through here. And then so the bottom, this is sys fan one and two. So the bottom one is the bottom fan. And then this one is plugged into the top, which is sys fan one. Uh, that's about it. CPU fans plugged in. Uh, we're going to plug it in and see if it boots. So, oh yeah. So that's what that. That's how much room is there for the audio cable. It's, uh, there's like no room for that cable. It's crazy. Yeah. Probably won't buy this case again, just for that. It's not very nice to cable managing, but it was fairly inexpensive, so.